Good evening. Welcome to As I See It, A Blind Woman's View. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. I'm Andrea Judici and I am the host. And I have with me my guide dog, who I do not introduce because that's better for his focus and our safety. I'm really, really excited to be back here this month and to have a wonderful, exciting guest with me. It's really interesting because we're in the month of April and I don't know if it's actually officially Disability Awareness Month, but it certainly seems to be a month when many of the school systems and other organizations are talking about disability awareness. And it ties perfectly in with our topic for this evening. Amy, I wanna thank you so much for coming tonight. You are from Watch For Me CT, and I'm gonna have you tell me more about exactly what you do so I make sure that I don't mess it up. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me, Andrea. Um, I'm from Watch For Me CT, which is a program that is a, it's sponsored by the Department of Transportation uh, in partnership with Connecticut Children's Medical Center's Injury Prevention Center. So what it is, is a focus on safety for pedestrians and bicyclists with the goal of reducing the uh, vehicle related crashes and injuries and fatalities involving pedestrians and bicyclists. That is. Fabulous. I, as a pedestrian, I'm totally psyched that such an organization exists. That is great. And specifically tonight, we're going to be talking about tips and um, sort of tricks of the trade for pedestrians who um, have a disability and also for drivers. And I learned a lot from speaking with you, both as a pedestrian and as a passenger to pass on to my driving friends. So I, I'm totally thrilled that we're going to have this conversation. One of the things that was so interesting to me when I learned about the, the project or program that you're doing is that we, I guess when we're really young, we learn about safety, you know, look and listen both ways before you cross the street. And, you know, when you're in kindergarten, you get to hold hands and it's big fun. But there are so many things that are not necessarily either taught when we're young because they're sort of not relevant because we're not out there wandering about by ourselves or maybe that have changed and traffic has changed. There are Absolutely. more cars, there's more distraction on the part of drivers, and there's just a lot more going on. Absolutely. So tell me some of what you're um, finding and, and some of the, the, the goal of this project. Okay, well, while overall traffic deaths have been going down over the years, which is anybody that's been injured or killed in a car crash, for pedestrians, it's been going up. So while we're making progress in curbing the number of people who are killed, who are driving, we're seeing a trend that is increasing of people who are walking or bicycling getting hit and injured and killed on the roads. So there were 6,000 people in the U.S. Um, last year and the year before, um, which is up from the previous years, and it's at an all-time high of pedestrians killed. And here in Connecticut, we had 163 people who were killed in Connecticut um, in 2015 six, and 16 and 17. So in those three years, we had um, that many deaths and m many more injuries. And um, so the program, what we want to do is teach drivers what they should know and how they, how they can be more aware when they're driving and some things that they need to know about the law. We want to teach pedestrians the different things that they can do to be safer as they're trying to get to their destinations and also cyclists what they can do to uh, reduce their risk and what I've learned from talking to you and from doing a little bit of my own research there are special considerations when you have a disability so if you're using a wheelchair if you have a, a sight disability or maybe a hearing disability that you have additional challenges that make you even more vulnerable on the streets and the risk for a pedestrian who is disabled is 36 percent higher than the general population so there's a lot of things that impact their safety on the road so they have to be extra careful i can't let my mom watch this show yes. she'll never let me she'll never be comfortable <laughs> with me walking around again no that's not true my mom is incredibly supportive of me walking around but that is really interesting and i think that it's so important that we talk about that because I know that when I got my orientation mobility training, one of the really important things that we focused on was how to be safe. But interestingly, in fact, I just found myself remembering this yesterday when I was walking from the store, the 
orientation and mobility instructor who was with you and I during a conversation was saying that if a, if a, if a driver is being very considerate and they've stopped at the crosswalk and, and to let you cross, to let me cross, that the safest thing to do is to wave them on because only when the intersection is clear do I really know that it's safe to cross. And I have gotten out of that habit. I'm sure I was taught that by my orientation mobility instructor, but I don't, I didn't remember that. Mm -hmm. I was just, I'm just so pleased when people actually stop that I want to reward them by crossing the street. Mm -hmm. um, so as I was waiting at the crosswalk to cross back from the grocery store, I remembered that. And so it was like, it, it's good to have this conversation even for people who have gotten the training because we all forget stuff. And so I'm really glad that we're having this conversation. I want to focus tonight primarily on safety for people who have um, vision impairments because I think those are some of the unique, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unique challenge to being a pedestrian. And also it happens to be the one that obviously mostly impacts me. But I'm also so interested in some of the things that you talked about w with regard to people who are using manual or particularly motorized wheelchairs and scooters. And I always sort of pictured them as being like cyclists, right? They're on wheels. Mm -hmm. um, and you explain that that's not the case. It's not. Um, somebody in a wheelchair, motorized or otherwise, is still considered a pedestrian. So even if they're in a powered chair, they're considered a pedestrian. So they should follow the same rules as other pedestrians. They should also yield the right of way to someone on foot. So you don't have the right to just run someone over, and that's common courtesy. But um, you do follow the same rules as a pedestrian. So you would obey the traffic signals for walk and don't walk. Uh, you would use crosswalks. Um, and and you would travel to uh, you know to the right side. You would travel with traffic, um, no against traffic. I'm sorry, that's a big error. If you're a cyclist, you would travel with the traffic. As a pedestrian or a motorized wheelchair pedestrian, you would go against traffic. It mm -hmm. gives you the best view and also the drivers the best view of you coming down the road. So um, you would stay to the far left. And another really interesting thing that I learned was tell me about crosswalks because this was really enlightening to me. Yes, actually, uh, <laughs> a crosswalk, we all know crosswalks as being uh, at the intersection when there's some paint down on the on the road, when there's lines or there's um, there's blocks of, of white to let you know. And so drivers know that they should yield to pedestrians in those crosswalks. But there's also, it's an implied crosswalk at any intersection where a sidewalk ends and then picks up on the other side of the street. Even if there's no pavement marking at all, there's no crosswalk paint, a driver still has to yield to a pedestrian in that crosswalk. So um, sometimes drivers will get uh, get upset, someone's in the road, but they have every right to be there if they're, if they're at an, um, a, an implied crosswalk, uh, painted or otherwise. And as a person who is blind, sometimes it's really difficult to determine where a crosswalk is. It, there's, Obviously, if I'm at a place where a sidewalk ends and a street happens and another sidewalk happens, that's an implied crosswalk. But what if I'm in an area I've never been in before and I can't seem to find mm -hmm. an intersection to cross at and I don't know what to do and I don't want to get in trouble for jaywalking, I think that's the term, sure. what it, illegally crossing the street, what are my options as a person with, with a um, visual impairment. Okay. Well, it, it is difficult sometimes to be able to just detect where those boundaries are, especially when there's infrastructure changes such as a raised uh, pl crosswalk where they, they make the crosswalk even with the platform, sort of a platformed crosswalk, so you lose that detection between the curb and the crosswalk. Um, there's also other things that can complicate crossings like medians and slip lanes and all kinds of things that are very complicated. So the best idea is to travel um, to Travel where you already know, and if you need to go where you don't know, to try to plan your route as much as possible. If you find yourself in an intersection that is completely unfamiliar, you wanna 
wait, orient yourself, listen to the traffic flow, wait a few cycles of the light to get a feel for um, how many cars are there, how, what the light cycle is, um, if there's other pedestrians around you, especially if you're at a brand new crosswalk and you don't know um, what kinds of things might be, if there's a median or other thing, you can ask for help um, if you want to, um, to get some help at that crossing. But you wanna look at, um, you wanna try to sense what you can figure out and you want to assess the risk. Is it worth the risk at this particular yep. crosswalk? <laughs> Very um, true. You know, and if, and if you can mitigate the risk by doing something like asking someone or uh, waiting and having the patients through enough cycles that you really get the feeling for what you're dealing with, um, then if, if you still feel like it's unsafe, then look to alternatives to crossing mm -hmm. and maybe cross somewhere else where it's going to be safer. Um, but I also want to point out that even if you were to cross and, and you were to be out of the crosswalk a little bit, as a blind person, a motorist must yield to you no matter where you are in the road. It's a special law that applies to people who use a cane, a white cane, or a dog to indicate visual disability. And no matter where you are on the road, a, 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 a motorist should be yielding to you and waiting until you have completed your cross um, because it's possible that you could have wandered out of the crosswalk and mm -hmm. not realize it so as a blind pedestrian you get that extra uh, courtesy of stopping no matter where you are in the road it's so it's so good to know because it, it can be difficult and um, I, i'm glad you pointed out that the the best practice when dealing with a, a pedestrian who's using a white cane or a guide dog is to wait until they've completely cleared the crossing. I, I can't tell you the times that I've um, been crossing and someone has yielded for me to cross in the crosswalk. And then as I've entered the traffic lane they're not in, so I'm halfway across the street or just over halfway, they proceed through the crosswalk. And while in my mind, intellectually, when I step back from it, that makes sense to me, right? I mean, I'm no longer in their travel lane, but it, it's very scary because I can't, determine how closely behind me they are. Mm -hmm. Are they actually going to, am I safe? Have I, clear, have I really cleared their vehicle? Um, and there's always that fear that what if, while they're doing that, there's something in the road that I'm not aware of and I end up tripping or falling. Or um, So I always say to my driving friends, please, if you ever are dealing with a blind person in your crosswalk, please, please, please just wait till, they've, till I've cleared the street before you um, continue to, to proceed through that crosswalk. Right. Well, with able-bodied pedestrians, it is legal to continue through the crosswalk once that pedestrian has reached the other side of the crosswalk and they're no longer in your lane. But that is for somebody who has sight um, and they can sense, they can see where you are and they can see their safety and, and all of that. But when you have a blind pedestrian, it can be very disorienting to complete that path through the crosswalk and so it is best practice and it is common courtesy that every driver should know that if you're dealing with a person who has a visual disability you should wait until they've completely gotten to the other side of the street because like you said crossing closely behind them even if you know as the driver you're not going to hit them it can be very disorienting to the person who's trying to cross yes absolutely it's interesting when you were talking about going into unfamiliar um, intersections it made me think so when Audible crossings, crossing signals first became a thing. They were great. Although I have to admit that there are times when they used to sound like birds. Mm -hmm. And there was actually a time once when it was actually a bird and not the crosswalk <laughs> signal, which was really a bad thing. Um, and now they've gotten much more high tech. They, they say wait and they often will tell you that you can cross or even what street the, the light that you're crossing with is okay. Mm -hmm. But they also do this thing where they beep. And I used to say, that's so silly. It's like you, they don't think, if, if, you, if you're pressing the button, then obviously you know where the thing is, so why would it beep? Well, it, it's just funny because I was always in familiar places, but finally one day I wasn't in a familiar place and I went, oh, they, they make a beep so that I know there's a crossing signal there. It was just one of those funny things where it, yeah. it should have been so obvious, but it wasn't. Um, and I love the fact that there are crossing signals now that, um, have an arrow that points toward the street that you're crossing mm -hmm. um, and, and, and actually say wait and actually say when to go and, and often even tell you what street the light, if it's all the streets or if it's whatever street you're trying to cross, um, where, the, where it is safe to cross and when, which is just fabulous. And I know that the laws are such that when an intersection is being revamped or a new intersection is being done or a new light is being done, those have to go in. 
but that doesn't do, that's not replacing the ones that are there in existence just for the sake of replacing them because they're very expensive. But mm -hmm. it is really awesome that they're, um, that they are starting to do that. Yes. because they, they make a really big difference. They really do. They do, and technology, like you said, is getting better. And sometimes if you hold the um, the button for an extra couple of seconds, you can get some audible um, information. Sometimes there's a message there that will t give you more information about that intersection. And hopefully more and more intersections will be equipped with this kind of technology. Um, there's also some places where they have the raised bumps that give you the geography of the intersection. And, and so we're hoping that as time goes like you said when as they replace them they will be even better and more able to help people get across the road uh, as a pedestrian especially as a blind pedestrian what you should remember though is that um, that audible sound although extremely helpful and the best thing to have when you're crossing it doesn't actually let you know that it's safe to yep. cross it Very lets you true. know this that the cycle is is um, has turned and that it's your turn uh, and that you have the right of way, but you want to make sure that you have taken that time ahead to um, to to get a sense of the traffic flow, to hear where cars are, to really get your orient orientation, and um, and then proceed with caution, always being aware because although that sign will let you know you have the walk sign, there's still a chance that uh, somebody's not paying attention, is just distracted, someone is running a light. Uh, but you can do. There's things you can do. Um, although you can't control every situation, some things that you can do to be aware uh, as much as you can of your situation and surroundings. And always stepping off with your parallel surge is still the safest, but it is definitely nice to at least know um, when when the little signal. Yes, little, that's, is it a hand? I don't even know yes, what it is, but it's whatever it is that you guys that's look That's sort of an on your mark. <laughs> yes. And then the get set is you taking a moment to uh, to think about your situation and then your go. So the, the audible signal gives you your on your mark so that you know it is okay for you to cross at this time, but you still want to take those extra steps of listening to the traffic and then proceeding with caution. Absolutely. Um, I had a, this happens to me every time, this train, you can't see the train, but it comes through and it takes my thought, right? <laughs> It's, oh, yes. It's yeah. running around this building. <laughs> a lot of my thoughts are running around on an invisible train in this building. Um, there was something that you had talked about um, the last time we spoke about this that I wanted to, ha to make sure that I had you um, address. And at the moment, it has completely eluded me. The tips for drivers. The tips for drivers. <laughs> yes, and that's definitely <laughs> one of them. So let's go to that. That's exactly what I meant. The tips for drivers. Yes. Well, drivers should be aware of the law. They should know about the crosswalks, what's a, what's a crosswalk, and that includes marked and unmarked crosswalks. They should know that pedestrians, especially disabled pedestrians, that, uh, that they have the right of way when the walk sign is illuminated and that they should wait for the disabled pedestrian to get to the other side of the street. They should have patience, and sometimes uh, the light is green or they feel like they can go, but the pedestrian is not quite safely to the other side of the road. And in the case of a disabled pedestrian, they should wait. Um, they should not drive distracted. Um, and that's not just phones. The actual greater cause of distracted driving accidents is people doing things like eating or personal hygiene. So you want to put down your phones. You're not supposed to shave and brush your right. teeth in the car? Exactly, you're not. So don't drive, uh, don't drive distracted um, or under the influence. Of course, obey the speed limit. And you just want to watch. You just want to watch for pedestrians and try to anticipate what's up ahead. Um, give people on the side of the road uh, three feet or more. You can cross the double yellow line to give people more space if you need to. It's legal. Um, if you want to give um, other, you know, pedestrians or someone using a motorized chair that's on the side of the road, as long as there's no oncoming traffic, you can cross that line to give them enough space because you just never know what that person will encounter that will make them have to go out into your lane. So just being aware, being courteous and patient can go a long way. That is that is so important, and it, it it is interesting that as the world gets busier and the cars get quieter, and it's not just the electric, the the, the fully electric cars or the hybrid cars. All cars are getting quieter. There's nothing I like more than a, a smelly old noisy car because mm -hmm. I have every way of knowing it's there. It smells. It's loud. It's like yay! I love your car. Um, I know I'm not supposed to, but I really do. Um, but but it is it is. A more complicated world. The, the 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 traffic. There's more of it. 
the intersections are getting and, and traffic patterns and, and traffic engineers or whoever it is that designs roads seems to be getting more car oriented and less pedestrian oriented mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm so glad that this is a conversation that happens and that there's a whole campaign dedicated to it because I don't ever want to live in a world where pedestrians aren't, don't feel welcome or safe. And I do know that I am a, I am a safe pedestrian. I make a, you, know, you, you can only do so many things, but you're absolutely right. You can, you can make, you can make all the right choices, and that's really important. One of the things that we talked about um, quickly is, tell me some of the things as a blind pedestrian that I can do to help make to help make sure that I'm making myself as visible to a car as possible. I know I'm standing in a, on a corner that has doesn't have bushes and trees, but what can I do with either my cane or my body language that can say to the person in the car, I want to cross this street? Right, I'm, I'm, you brought up a lot of great things. Um, thank you for bringing up the quiet cars and the yeah. electric cars. So people driving electric cars, first of all, need to be definitely more aware that blind people are not always able to hear them if they're coming, so they have to be extra cautious. So I just wanted to say that I'm glad you reminded me. But as far as um, when you're on the corner and you want to cross, um, you can increase the chances that all cars will see you and will yield by doing a few things. And that includes- Picking up um, my guide dog and waving it around? <laughs> everybody stops for a dog. <laughs> but um, there are some things, they've done some research, um, and somebody just standing at a curb doing nothing, uh, will less cars will yield to them if than if they were to take their cane out and to, uh, to move it in front of them, and that will increase yielding. Also, putting up your hand in a stop motion, um, uh, which is with your, your arm outstretched and your fingers pointing upwards, that will let someone know that you need them to stop. Um, also, stepping out, if you can, safely step into the, into the crosswalk a little bit, um, which may be hard if you have a dog because uh, if it's unsafe, you need to be able to step back off the curb, which might not be something that you can do if you have a dog. But if you have a cane, you may be able to make one step forward and then re be prepared to make that step back if you need to, if it's unsafe. But motorists are far more likely to stop for a pedestrian that's actually in a crosswalk than if they're just at the crosswalk, which is the current legislation in Connecticut. Say, which brings up a pet peeve and something I really want to get active about, which is that right now the law does say for a pedestrian in a crosswalk. I've been, yeah. I'm so glad we had that conversation because I've always been wondering as I'm standing there, you know, thinking mad thoughts about pedestrians who don't, or I mean, um, drivers who don't stop when I'm standing at the crosswalk. The law really does read right now in the crosswalk. Right. So we're talking about crosswalks that are not signal, so signalized. So there's right. no walk no walk tone that automatically right. or light that makes a car stop. Yeah. Um, and the law up until a couple of years ago was that that drivers should yield to pedestrians at a crosswalk. And that word at is important. And um, that means if someone's standing on the curb looking as if they're going to cross, you should stop. They've changed it a couple of years ago, very recently, to be in a crosswalk. And changing at to in now means that you don't have to stop unless the person has stepped into the road, which is maybe not a huge concern if you have no physical disabilities at all and you're very able-bodied and can step back and forth as as much as you want all day long. But if you are somebody who has a disability, if you're in a chair, if you're using a dog, uh, or even just a cane because stepping backwards is a complicated maneuver and not always safe and a tripping hazard. Um, so it, it is worth looking at that again to say, is it, does it more, does it serve the people with disabilities better if that language is at a crosswalk versus in a crosswalk? So something to explore. I'm definitely a fan of the at a crosswalk, I must say. Um, it, it's so interesting, and, and I know that if the, not to belabor this point too much, but I know that if the, if, the, if the law changed and the word said at, that while most people probably don't know all the words, they can't tell you the word, the exact wording of the law, mm -hmm. the law informs how students are taught when they're learning to drive yep. and probably how manuals are written. Yes, absolutely, and it changes the patterns of behavior that people use, and it, it catches on, and at some point, you know, if everyone's stopping for somebody that is at a crosswalk, then it becomes the best practice that everybody does from there on, and so that would probably be a, a good change. Uh, and one thing that I'm remembering that you said, and I know that as a pedestrian, I'm always sort of, 
if I had ears that could prick up, they would definitely prick up because when, when a car stops to, to let me cross, there's always in the back of my mind, okay, so this car right here is now stopped. Mm -hmm. But what if the people behind that car don't see me, especially if it's like a big car? And so one of the things that you often, that you said when we spoke last was that it's really important for drivers to remember that if a car in front of you, you're traveling on the road and a car in front of you has stopped, particularly at a crosswalk, but as you said, if you don't really know ever why, to not just assume that they're just there to hold you up and to go around them because Absolutely. that's so dangerous because if you can't see around the car in front of you, you may not be seeing the pedestrian. And if someone's in a wheelchair, they're not even necessarily gonna show above right. even a smaller car. Right, or a child, for example, but absolutely, I'm so glad you brought that up because uh, two young ladies in Hartford were killed this year in January when they were stepping out of a, their parked Uber and somebody from behind the car wanted to come around and, and hit them. And so that is a very dangerous scenario. If you see a car, especially stopped at a crosswalk or any intersection, that you proceed, that you stop, and if you must proceed because you believe that they are stopped, that you proceed slowly because there could be people that are crossing in front of that car that you can't see because they are being obstructed by that car. And you, you could hit them by the time you reach that point of that crosswalk. Yes, and there's a couple of things that I just wanna add as a person who is blind, who, who um, walks around all the time. When, if you as a driver, you drivers out there, talking to you, <laughs> Um, if, if I'm crossing in front of your vehicle, it's really important that you don't honk to say, like, to let me know that it's okay because you can't make eye contact with me because that, that's really scary because when someone honks, it usually means something bad is happening and then I get scared. Mm -hmm. um, also, if, if you stop at a crosswalk and, and you want me to go forward and I wave you on, please respect that it's not because I don't appreciate that you're being polite, but that because there's something that has caused me to not want to cross, and it may be as simple as if your vehicle is there, I'm not being able to hear what's going on around me, right? Again, safest practice, according to an O&M instructor, orientation mobility, is to clear the intersection, right? To make sure that all the vehicles aren't there. Mm -hmm. And even if I am standing there and you let me, and, I, and, and there may be ambient sounds that you're not aware of, like a lawnmower or a leaf blower or a, um, really, a plane flying over. So while it's, well, all of this we've talked about yielding for pedestrians. If, I can only speak for me, but it, certainly if you ever encounter me in a crosswalk or, or other blind people and you get and you stop and you think, well, now I've done this nice thing, I've stopped and this person refuses to cross the street, there's probably a really good reason for that. And in spite of the fact that you're being polite and that is appreciated, please respect the waving on. I've had people stop and like argue with me and roll down their window. I said it's okay to go, thank you, but you know, why do I know that? Um, well, we could go on and on about this, but unfortunately that's not what's allowed on this show because it's <laughs> only 30 minutes. So I wanna thank you so much for coming. If anyone wants to learn more about what we've talked about, what can, give me quickly a website or something they can go to. They can go to www.watch for me, ct.org, and it's F O R, not the number four. So watch for me, ct.org, and you can also go to Facebook, backslash watch for me, ct, and you can get tips for drivers, for pedestrians, and for bicyclists, and also people can reach out to me um, through the website or the Facebook if they have specific questions about disabled pedestrians who, are, um, who need tips for safe crossing. Fantastic. Thank you everyone for tuning in. This is, as I see it, a blind woman's view. And I look forward to being here next month. Be kind to yourselves and to everyone else.